Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last week, at the end of last week, I prepared the what I'm calling the first half of the financials for the for the month of December, which is also our year end. Um, we are at the year end, and the percentages that we're going to compare to are 100%. <coughs> it's obvious. The notes are going to be brief because I'm still in process, and I will get to that in a minute. Motor vehicle in income came in the year for 2.644 million, which is $85,000 above budget above which is the target and one hundred fifty seven thousand dollars ahead of last year we had a good year the other major contributors to the total income of six point seven seven four million were building permits at 232 state of New Hampshire at 1.2 million uh, Department of Income 629 parking lots 377 another banner year rental of town property 386 and real estate trust at 502 that 502 number will get bigger um, I received the last transfer uh, from the real estate trust and I'm booking it. it it's a 12 number that I'm receiving 13 but I'm going to book it back I check with the auditors and they do want me to do that so there'll be additional monies there so once again just an example of the numbers are still moving expense summary at the end of December the operating departments without debt service were at 97.5 percent and when I do the calculations I'm taking the prior year encumbrances adding to the budget that's what I consider to be the base number to play with, which is 2.5% two, 2 below the target of 100. However, when you modify this with the effect of the open POs, the year-end savings, which everybody's been watching all year, is now earned expended by $32,000. You had $24 million, and we have $32,000 left, and I'm not done spending percentage of the annual budget we've expended is 99.85 percent uh, this was unexpected um, I expected to have at least a couple hundred thousand dollars and as I'll get into in a minute I think the differential is the amount of the open POs at the end of 12 compared to 11 is two hundred thousand dollars higher which when you do the calculations is really what's generating the drop from where I expected to be however uh, there is $129,000 worth of grant expense and this is an allowable this can be added to the budgeted figure so therefore we really have $150 something thousand dollars um, that we're still in the positive we will not go negative but it's probably the closest I ever want to be again that said 13 is going to be a tough year during the next two weeks these financials will be continued to be reviewed and adjusted this is also done in preparation for the audit field work, which is scheduled to be uh, starting February 11th. Uh, auditors were here today for a one-day <coughs> review of controls, and um, that went quite well. They were hoping to stay another day, but they got, they got double booked, so they will not be with us tomorrow. Uh, please note, there's a second analysis that was passed out. It's uh, a spreadsheet along with some backup information showing the major items being encumbered <coughs> encumbered being covered by purchase orders along with a copy of the outstanding open uh, 2012 purchase order listing this too is subject to review by the departments and will be adjusted as necessary when we did one final accounts payable run last Monday that's what generated this list this has not gone back out to the department so there's things in it that I know probably will be taken down potentially something from um, IT something from public works I think the um, chemicals is still high so those things should flush out so if you reduce the open POs you will reduce or actually increase the spread that that said I wanted to request permission to open a 2012 PO for the, the amount of fourteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars this is to update the code book that's been written and this was um, quoted back we have an email several months ago uh, specifically August and Mr. Welch asked me to put this in get the PO cut and it was my failure to bring this through that it would have or should have been on this open PO list it was my error and I apologize and I'm requesting permission from the board to basically generate a 12 PO for the amount of 14350 
to cover the code book that would be processed through in 13. Those are the big highlights. Uh, on the POs, I put the highlighted items. If you look, of the 312,000 I put my, I've highlighted out of the 500,000 that's out there, $140,000 deals with the Lafayette Road when it's kind of uh, intersection. There's $100,000 opened up for uh, potential sewer work and the uh, $41,000 for the engineering. That is the continuation of the $48,000 PO that was open in 11 actually. We spent some, so there's 41000 left. That's just a carryover. One of the things I didn't see coming was the repair of the waste, wastewater treatment plant roof. That's $40,000. Um, but what I'm saying is these are all legitimate. These are not Christmas items. These are things that we needed to get done. And I open questions for comments. for Mr. Swartz or Mr. Pierce. Uh, yes, I have several questions. <clears throat> and uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, great report, and I appreciate all your efforts. And I'm surprised we were sitting at about 300,000. We're down to 38,000. That sort of got my attention. And I was looking through that this nice handout, and there's quite a bit of activity there in the end of December. <clears throat> quite a few things I'll get to later. Uh, just going through this, I, I, I sort of like to jump on 16 and 16 because it's sort of like a grand summary. And I have a significant problem here with a couple of issues. Um, if you look at public safety, police department is $28,000 in the hole. And once again, I point towards the grant accounts. And so the grant account in the police department. Seventeen thousand of that twenty-eight thousand. I additionally point to the PO listing with the thirty thousand dollars worth of maintenance. We had that nineteen thousand dollars for the roof, uh, the the uh, cooling system. There was an emergency repair, or I think it's ten thousand dollars without looking at it quickly. Ten thousand dollars for a new fence. So there's, to me, uh, a minimalist number that is going under. We knew that there would be positives and negatives throughout this report. And when we were working towards the end of the year, I was reviewing all the POs against their budgets and also against the bottom line. So that when we issued or allowed a PO to be cut, I was going to Mr. Welch and we were <coughs> agreeing with those at that time. Well, I have a little problem with that because I was under the impression, or I think it's more or less the guideline that we, uh, when there's a shift of money from one department in the budget to another department, we have to have some kind of a... I don't really consider this a shift of money. I'm not asking for funding to be moved for, to it. I'm saying that he <coughs> overspent his budget by a slight amount. Yeah. And I, and I'm, I know I'm, I'm bending the English language a little bit. But in essence, the reason I'm here tonight is really to talk bottom line. And you're right, there are going to be departments. And then there's, in the financial administration, there's 56,000 that didn't get spent. And then in another one, in legal, there's 81,000 that didn't get spent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm saying is I, was, I recognize these going forward. And so therefore I knew that I had room to allow what I considered to be major expenses, but you know, really necessary expenses to happen during the month of December. I can't argue with anything you're saying, but I have a little problem with, there seems to be a, a sort of a consistent situation here. We have it in the police department, we have it in the building and code inspection. The, that, that building code inspection, that uh -huh. is the new truck that you, you allowed. If you took the truck out, he would have actually been under by $700. Okay, and then that gives us a subtotal of 31000 If you go on down, if you look at highway streets and, and municipal sanitation, now we're at 125000 on uh, and I've, and I've pointed out to you that $141,000 belongs to the Lafayette Road when it kind of... Okay, we might as well go ahead and hit that right now while we're here. Sure. Um, <coughs> I was noticing that you're saying that there's $100,000 in this breakdown that has to do with something that was approved on December 20th, if I'm not mistaken. Now let me find it here in this sheet. Um, yes. For a hundred thousand dollars on December twentieth, 
and I won't mention the contractor's name, but uh, you're going to say that there was no bid. Is on there a written contract to make uh, that allow that to be encumbered? We we needed a vehicle to encumber the money because the, the discussion was that if we could, we should at least have the monies related to that project in this year to match up with the Warren article. And you're right, there is no there is no contract with the vendor in, involved. I needed at least a decent vendor so I could issue a PO. This is one of those that we know we are going to void this contract, this PO, no matter what happens, whether the project is passed or not. If the project is passed by the town vote, mm -hmm. then we, w we now have $100,000 to deal with the potential under underpinning issues with, with the sewer. And this would then become a bid contract. <coughs> and if I kill the PO and then reissue another one, mm -hmm. then the net effect is it's still there. Well, the thing of it is, though, if you, we don't even know what we're going to be doing with what's under the road at this point in time. And we don't know if the voters will approve it or disapprove it. And my, my big problem is if it's encumbered now, it should have been approved by the legislative body to be encumbered, number one. You, and number no. two, at $100,000, it's, not, it's not way over it's the not purchasing policy of a $50,000 guideline. It's not the legislative body to make accruals against a budgeted line item. This is not going against the Warren article. This is a budgeted line item for sewer repairs. I don't know if I follow your logic there. This this is under the auspices of your board. Okay. Not legislative. This is an open. This is this is like any other contract that you deal with during the year. Not you 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 have two things going on. One, you have a potential. You have a warrant article that's out there for a potential project to do the in infrastructure, the right. Lafayette Road. Yeah. And from all indications, there is probably some sewer work that's going to have to be done because they did the TV scoping. Right. And we found that there's leakage in there. Right. And so we had, at the time, we believed enough money to put it as a encumbrance to put it there. We put the PO because that's the easiest vehicle for me to get it on an encumbrance list. Uh, that sounds like to me that we're legally encumbering money in 2012 for something we're going to do in 2013 and $100,000. Number one is way past the bid limit and number two, if it's encumbered, it should be brought before this board to approve the encumbrance. That's what I'm doing. That's where I'm here. But this is 2013 we're in now. No, we're still dealing with 2012. I understand, but this was done in, uh, in December 20th. And all POs that I'm trying to deal with are cut before December 31st of the year. Okay, do you understand? Would you like Mr. Welch to help you? I don't agree with the way this is done, that's Okay, sure. well, he's given you the answer. So, do you have other things that you want to bring up? Uh, well, yeah, we I'll start over again back here because we got off on that one. <clears throat> I'm a little um, confused about a couple of other issues too. Let me get this back here because I got I was spent some serious time on that, and um, I don't still don't understand that, and I don't subscribe to what I've been told. That's for sure. Um, I do have a problem with. Uh, no, that's the other one I had. Okay, that explained that one. So I'm, I think I'm all set temporarily. Okay, I'll yield. More. I'll yield. Thank you, um, Mike. I apologize. I did not get to this over the weekend, so I'm. I'm. I'm here, and what I'm trying to do is give you the most current information I have. But as I said. This is going to get reviewed. I'm coming back I, in two weeks. I've been through your enclosings before, not with you, well, with you as well, but right. on my own. It's, yeah. It doesn't happen magically on the 31st of December. Never will. What happened with the Rye Sewer Agreement? I'm looking at revenues now. 100000 bucks over budget. What, blah, 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 blah. what happened? That literally is what got billed. Um, I saw all, wow. all, yeah, I agree. 
Is there a, is it, was, it, was there a change in the meter? I mean, is this something that says it's I would just have been, to go back and look at all the papers. That's really amazing. I mean. I, and I totally agree with you. And probably, I'd have to look back at the prior year, and probably it was under budgeted. But hmm. I did not expect it to be that high. I, yeah. I, I always say that. Okay. Um, in total, how did the revenues that you actually have now, at least to this point, booked, compare to the uh, revenues used in your tax setting, tax rate setting? They are slightly higher, especially with the $100,000 that we booked uh, for the insurance. That wasn't, I don't believe I knew about that one at the time. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that was unbudgeted. Um, so the effect of the undesignated fund balance or whatever the today's if, if word is. The, uh, the un undesignated fund balance, depending on what we do with um, changes in the uh, encumbrances, mm -hmm. okay, the only effect, only positive effect will come from revenues. As you can see, well, from, 161, from now you've got 161,000 coming from yeah. this, you know, expenditures because of the grant, so plus whatever there is is in, yep, so, so the 170, 5,000 or whatever that we used to reduce the tax rate in 2012 should be more, more than, than covered offset. by the underspending or over revenue position. Yep. That's good. Um, I want, I do want to spend a few minutes, if I may, Mr. Chairman, on the open Please. PO list. Sure. Um, and I'm just going to start with your summary page, which comes down to the uh, a total of 733,000 of open POs. And you've assigned approximately 210,000 of those to uh, special funds, uh, revolving funds or revenue funds of one kind or another. Correct. The beach infrastructure is the lighting, as I understand it, on A through yes. C or D. D. Okay. Or D. Maybe. So the so the the village district is going to be the person issue. I mean, they're the ones who are managing its issue, or are we okay. managing? It is our issue? fund. That money has been in our fund. Fund 21, and that is under our control. And I believe we've received permission from the the beach to go ahead with the project, and it's under the control of the manager and the the, the contractors out there. Yeah, the, I mean the PO was issued, right? Just the work oh, yeah. hasn't been per performed. It's, it's actually oh. ongoing. They're ongoing. They're working on it now. I'm sorry, I haven't. They're in the ground. You can yeah. see them long after. Okay, good. Yep. So, it, so it just hasn't been paid for yet. No, but we'll we'll end up with expense next year because this yeah. these are town property. No, un no, understand. It's 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 the money's coming from the town fund. Understand? Yeah. yeah. The cable fund. That's the truck. Understood. But do we have a problem there? Only in that we might exceed a hundred thousand. Uh, according to legal counsel, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not legal. The DRA. That hundred thousand dollars is not uh, a ceiling. We have the, that's the normal raise and appropriate number, but since it's a revolving fund, we have the access to the whole fund. So the answer is not according to what I got from the DRA. I got, I got you, but I, and I apologize for not being 100% tonight, but let me make sure I, I thought we were changing it to a revolving fund. Are we changing I'm sorry, it to it's a special, it's spe it's special revenue fund? Special revenue and fund now. I'm sorry, the, the, the verbiage I just gave you is still the same. Okay. <laughs> so it's a special revenue fund. The DRA answered the question with that knowledge in mind. Yes. Very well. Um, the private detail fund is getting charged with a $15,500 Tahoe. The police forfeiture fund is getting charged with a $46,000 Tahoe. Uh, can more. we buy two of the Tahoes at $15,000? <laughs> um, I, I believe that you need to look at both pieces because um, I believe some of it is dealing with the setup. There's more than just, you just don't buy the car, especially this new Tahoe. Okay, there should be more than just the Tahoe's involved in these. It's one line item in both instances. Okay. Well, that's because of just the way we cut the PO. That's a hell of a lot of setup. Is it possible that what you've got is two Tahoe's at thirty-one thousand dollars, and you're funding it with forty-eight thousand dollars from the from one account and fifteen thousand from another? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we split the funding. Is what we've I done. think it's yeah. what you're looking at is the funding as opposed to the vehicles. Yeah, it's so all the carrier equipment. Yeah. Two vehicles. Okay, that explains yeah. that. I had that question. It, we just, Thank you, Ben. The, the chief split the funding. That's all. He took X from one account and he took the difference, the delta, from another. 
there are more than that. I see that the GO account number is different between the 46,000. Oh, yeah, I got that. Yep. All right, I'll assume that uh, that is appropriate as far as the use of the police forfeiture fund. That has been checked out. Um, the repair of Marine 2. Yep. I haven't gotten that far in the detail. I apologize for it's, that, but what are we talking pontoons. about? The pontoons are really the part that holds the boat up. Mm -hmm. And UV damage over a long period of time has made it, as far as I know, basically inoperable. And they wanted to get it running again, so they've, they're purchasing the repair type. Do we know how long it's been inoperable? I don't have that answer. And don't quote me, does it manage? Don't either, sir. No. More than a year is it, it just is one of my sensitive points, so I guess I'll leave it alone. Um, just, just. I'm sorry to go through this level of detail, but I just want to make sure I understand. The election, the uh, first page, $5,818 uh, to Alpha Printer Works. <coughs> I just wanted to make sure I understood the account number there. Is that elections or in one of the areas of elections for one four oh one? Give me the grand total of the PO is fifty eight eighteen. That is a, that is um, I believe that is town clerk and then the other one is <coughs> elections. So we're just doing new counters, cabinetry, uh, I don't understand what we're doing. Her now. her all her desks are Stone Age. And she's having those replaced. Uh, we're bringing up a new workstation, I believe, which is why there's a computer in there, and a new printer. Um, okay. The first one on that page, the $7,100. Yeah. Um, the Class A uniforms. Is this for is this for um, for part-time people or, or for sp uh, special special officers during the season or what's that? This uh, these, this this is a holdover from the Warren article for the horses. This goes back, and this is one I've been working with the police trying to get them to order these things. They finally did. These are uniforms for mounted patrol. So that'll um, go against, that'll go against uh, that's uh, why an, un, an yeah. un, is it, is it, is the money lapsed from the warrant article? No, because we had it, we had it open again due to the prior PO. So this is a replacement PO and they finally finally placed literally the order again. On the page two, the fifty six hundred dollars, actually the PO is sixty four ten. It includes fifty six hundred dollars for saddles. Is that also coming from that warrant article? No. That is coming from the horse the horse expense. <coughs> um How can I answer, ask this question without guaranteeing to be pulled over on the way home tonight? <laughs> it seems as if that's a little bit, that's a quite a quite a great deal of money per saddle. Um, how old are the existing, I mean, presumably we have existing saddles. I would hope so. I'd like that one to be, but when is our dead, when is our deadline for trying to finalize this for your, for your urine statements? Um, I, would I would like, like a little bit of an explanation on that one, weeks. if I may. Sure. I'm getting close to the end, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for the. On page five, um, in Department 4210, pre-employment screening, $4,500 in total. Uh, how can we? What, what? It pertains to activity that's now complete. Russell's? No, I believe they're still. They're, they were going through. If, if I'm not mistaken, they were going to go be going through another round to try and get another class of specials going. And I believe this is what this is dealing with. If not, uh, I'm unclear of the rationale for taking, for taking an expense that would be in, in 2013 and trying to bring it forward to 2012. I understand let we me, want, I mean, I understand why we want to do these Let me check on this one to make sure that this doesn't have to do with physicals, et cetera. Okay, thank you, appreciate people. that. We had already on t further down that page thirty three thousand dollars, and I think you highlight that on uh, uh, police department major maintenance. Yep. The chief had told us, and we certainly supported a twenty thousand ish dollar um, redo of, a, of an air handler or something like that regarding the HVAC system. At, uh, that went out in October. Um, is any of that included here, or is that something that's in addition that's to this thirty three thousand? That's 
the 19th, that's the first item, the replacement okay. of the AC coils? So we are, we are expanding that to, to be a total of $33,000, well, all of which goes to the same problem that the no, corros sir. corrosion. No, if you read the next, war the next one, it's to the fence company for replace existing swing gate for 10006 which is what I tried to point out. Gotcha. Okay. So the 20000 that we talked about it's earlier good. in the year has never been expended. It's still an open PO. Yeah, it, they're on order, and it's the manufacturing cycle time. Thank you, Mr. Swartzard. I appreciate that one. Uh, I believe I'm getting close to being done. I apologize to the board as well for not having had an opportunity to look at this before I got here tonight. One more question. The bank, the uh, page seven, last one on that page, 16200 bucks. Crushed gravel, crushed stone, sand, and bank run gravel. What are we up to there? That, I believe, was an order for, for materials that were needed for public works. That just, to me, was a normal operating PO that they placed the order. It just happened to fall into this time frame. I will verify that. Gotcha. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Nichols. Yeah, I have a few, although quite a few of them have been addressed already. Um, on the cable TV fund, just to confirm, um, with the open PO for 30 thousand um, for the box van mm -hmm. then um, which I understand the intention is to for that to be purchased and invoiced during January right it got delayed so right so th that will essentially draw the cable TV fund down to about 44,000 yes sir okay that's one um, I would just point out that that was 120,000 this summer um, I think we covered this part of it. The, the analysis that you had provided us, you had indicated that you anticipated about 300,000 in open POs, and in operating we ended up with about 509,000. <coughs> and slicing through most of it, um, I can account for the majority of it, which is pretty much all I'll talk about with the Winnicott Road intersection mm -hmm. with, with those um, two POs. Um, there's there's 41,305 for Winnicott Road intersection engineering with Hoyle and Tanner with a PO date of, of December 6th. Um, I have a concern um, with us um, spending more money going forward from 12-6 on the intersection where the voters haven't approved it. Okay, that that was just a reissue. The original PO was for $48,000 and it wasn't getting reduced it was set up similar to the to the engineer uh, the the road so what i'm saying is that we had hoyle tanner has has in essence a p of forty eight thousand dollars they spent six thousand dollars this is just a reissue i voided the original one and i reissued so this actually is a 2011 po that's been reissued in 12. and this is the differential between what we set up a 48, and that's what we talk about in the uh, war knuckle. Okay. So, so it's how the same much number? So <coughs> how much is available to spend on that PO going forward? Forty-one thousand three hundred five dollars. Okay. And, and and my point is, I would hope that we spend almost no money on that until the it's, vote is taken. It's on hold. Okay. Yeah, we're not okay. Spending we're not spending okay. That, that's fine. Um, my next one relates to the, the $100,000 um, PO related to the sewer repairs, yep. and I have a concern with that, and I, I just want to read the um, section of the um, municipal budget law related to lapse of appropriations, and it kind of is the same point on a bigger number as, as Ben was making on the um, employee testing or whatever. Um, all appropriations shall lapse at the end of the fiscal year, and any unexpended portion thereof shall not be expended without further appropriation and less. Okay? And going to this $100,000 PO, I can only see one line that could pertain to that because most of them relate to different types of, of funds, capital reserve funds. And this says, the amount has, <coughs> prior to the end of that fiscal year, which would be December 31st, become, become encumbered by a legally enforceable obligation created by contract or otherwise to any person for the expenditure of that amount. It doesn't sound like we've got a legally enforceable obligation on that 100000 So therefore, I don't see how we can encumber that 100000 So in, in, in my opinion, that 100000 
should not go forward because I don't believe that based on, on my interpret of the statute, and this has been discussed several times since I've been a selectman and the, the understanding that I just articulated is the way it was discussed before. And I think the same thing applies to Ben's. Which one was that, Ben? It was small. It was about 4,500. It was something in the police department for testing. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't have, I understand the idea behind, you know, trying to take that 100000 and put it aside for the sewer, because I think we are going to have to spend some money on sewer um, if, in fact, the Warren article is approved. But I just don't see how we can do it. Mr. Chairman, can I yeah. make one? I think we had talked about some number for Lafayette Road, and I don't think we necessarily said that it was going to be dependent upon whether the intersection was approved. This is the, if I understand it, this is a result of the camera work that was done late summer, early fall, and there were two areas that uh, that Public Works said were in, you know, were in very bad condition, and I think we talked about this at that time and said we should repair those irrespective of what happens to the... I agree with that, but my point, then is in order, <coughs> it, it indicates the amount has, prior to the end of that fiscal year, become encumbered by a legally enforceable obligation created by contract or otherwise to any person for the expenditure. If, if that's what we wanted to do, then back in December, we should have, have figured out what we wanted done and entered into a contract with an individual. We didn't do that. Well, but I think we're talking about now how pure we will be as far as uh, these things. I think for probably for at least 10 years, if not longer, we have issued a PO, which has been, you know, which has been done in December. Um, and we've and we've encumbered the funds in that direction. So uh, uh, that's the way we've done it. I'm not sure if we can change the rules. Um, that, I'm just that suggesting that either this late in the, this I'm suggesting late in the that we comply with 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 the statute. That's all I am suggesting. That's what I was trying to point out earlier, Mr. And, and it, it's I, I don't you know to be quite honest with you, if this was a five hundred <coughs> or, or a four thousand dollar expenditure, I'm not sure I, I would have made a big issue of it. But it's 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 a hundred thousand dollars. So that's that's my opinion, and let me continue along with my points, and we can ultimately decide how we're going to handle that. Um, in terms of of the over expenditure, and and Mike pointed out um, police. There's obviously there's also a substantial over expenditure in DPW, and if I look at at, at DPW as um, one account, in other words, it's under expended by twenty two thousand in the highway end of it, and it's over expended by one hundred and twenty five thousand in municipal sanitation. Um, that's overspent by one hundred three thousand. I don't believe that you can overspend a line item at the level of the warrant um, without the approval of, a, of the governing body. Certainly, we've had a lot of discussions relative to sublines, and I'm in complete agreement with you as far as sublines. But 3210 says if changes arise during the year following <coughs> the annual meeting that make it necessary to expend more than the amount appropriated for a specific purpose, and it defines a specific purpose later to the level of lines within the warrant, as you pointed out, and I agree, the governing body may transfer to that appropriation an, unex an unexpended balance remaining in some other appropriation. And as you pointed out, we haven't gone over on the bottom line, 32,414. I believe that on these accounts that are negative, that there needs to be a motion and um, a vote such that those lines are not negative. Okay, Based so on he agrees, he, that's what he believes. What do you believe? Well, actually, I believe that when you look at the actual expenditures, we're underexpended uh, when you compare the $24,290,000, that's the actual expenditures compared to the budget. We actually did not expend 100%. We're now dealing in the encumbrance levels, which is part of the adjustments that we're talking about. That the $500,000 encumbrance actually is going to be worked through the undesignated fund balance. 
the actual expenditures are the line that says actual. So we haven't really overexpended as many as it looks like here. If you were to pull that $100,000 encumbrance mm -hmm. out of the list that I've suggested, you, that number, just you're just now down to $2,000. I understand. Okay? I understand. And if you run down the percent used, uh, executive is over by 2%, personnel administration is 6%, <coughs> building is 9 and we know what that is, emergency management is 9 uh, it's $100. Highways and streets, but when you look at the two highways, the two public works, it's at 93 and 97, and basically patriotic purposes is over by 40, $400. I'm saying that you would not really need to do adjustments to the budget because you didn't really overexpend the budget. What you are now looking at is putting in the encumbrances and that is a budgeted item. That becomes a budget for next year just as it did when you did the 2011 encumbrances. Did you want to weigh in on this Mr. Welch? The statute says may. If in fact you decide, and there's a board policy, I mean that's something that you folks have to make up. You have to, you have to promulgate that. If, if you promulgate that, then what you're doing is you're saying to us, okay, um, XYZ department, uh, next week you're going to be in the red. Stop spending money, there's no payroll, there's no nothing until the Board of Selectmen approves a transfer from somewhere. <coughs> the problem is that in order to do a transfer, you must determine that the money you're transferring is no longer needed for the purpose for which it was appropriated. That's to the level of test that you have to get to. Now, the town has never done that. Yes, you can do it. There's no question about that fact at all. You certainly can do it. But what you do is you tie everybody's hands because once you make that determination, it doesn't matter what the emergency is or what's going on in the department. If something happens and you're going to overexpend, it gets shut down until the board approves it. And that's where, you, that's where you go with that sort of thing. So it's a dangerous thing to do. Now, at the end of the year, you cannot overextend the bottom line of the budget. DRA recognizes either process. You can, as long as you don't overextend the budget, you can deficit spend within line items as long as the bottom line item is not deficit spent. If it is, there's a provision in the statute that says you must appropriate the deficit in the following year as part of the annual budget appropriation. We're not going there because I don't believe we can overexpend the budget. Exposure. I'm a lot stricter than DRA is in that because I read the statute the way it's written. Mm -hmm. Transfers are something within your authority. If you decide that we're going to transfer before <coughs> we overexpend any line item, we'll do that. But you have to understand that if you refuse to transfer, that line item gets shut down and so does that department. That's, that's the caveat that goes with that trigger. And, and that's something that we've never done. And the town has never transferred, at least in the time I've been here, or the records I've seen prior to my coming, those sums to even out so you have every line item as a, a, a non-negative figure. That's a negative comment, I guess. <laughs> Additionally, if you're going to be moving budgeted, then you've basically changed the budget. In theory, if you change during the year your budget to cover pluses and minuses, then that would affect the budgeting sequence that you've gotten, you know, you're into in regards to where you're going with 2013. Okay. It, it's just changing if numbers to, to settle it out. 3210 states for a specific purpose, and it goes on to define the definition of a specific purpose in 32.3. <coughs> in 32.3, it indicates a line on the budget form posted with the warrant. I've been a selectman for five years as far as closing out the year, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have never reflected a negative spending, overspending, on the level of a line on the warrant. The police department has never spent more than the combination of their budget and their previous year's um, um, encumbrances going forward. The DPW and so on and so forth. I'm not talking about sublines. I'm talking about a whole department here. And I agree with your point um, that the $100,000 in DPW makes up the vast majority, 100 of 122. Let me get to my final point, and I'll go back to that one. Um, 
just so I understand the impact um, on the UFB, and that was discussed somewhat when Ben was talking, so I, I, I think that, that we're in sync. On the expense side, we spent all but 38356 correct? No, we spent... To 24,290 against the budget is 24,520. Once again, we're, we're playing with the encumbrances. We plus, plus, minus, minus. But we haven't, that's what's available. It's not what we spent. And when, if, if nothing happened tonight, you know, everything just flew this way, what would happen is that you would find that your 24 million is what you'd show is expended in 2013. Then in 2012. 2012. I'm confused already. <laughs> what you would then see is that in your fund balances, you have from prior year you have $324,000 for encumbrances. That number would be increased to $521,000 <coughs> at the end of 12. If you increase that number from three to five. The two has to come from somewhere, and that's going to come from the undesignated fund balance or whatever we're calling it today. But it's not an expenditure. It's a change in the fund balance okay. and counting for the encumbrances. Okay, so on the expense side mm -hmm. as opposed to the revenue side, yeah. in terms of the impact on the undesignated fund balance, how much money are we adding to that? You would add the difference between... 24.2 and 24.5. So you'd be adding $210,000. Okay. And that's the then total add on the expense side. That would add. But I'm going to subtract it if I change the encumbrances. Okay. So you get you basically your zero. Okay. And the difference in the encumbrances is 200000 which leads you to, to zero. To the number. So we're basically adding about $10,000 on the expense side. Yes. On the revenue side, you've got, you backed out the um, capital, which I, I forget the amount of that, but it was like 800000 or yes. whatever. And I, I fully understand that to come up with a revenue number of 6774, 6.774 million. And if I have it correctly, you used 6.345 million in the setting of the tax rate with DRA. Yeah. So therefore, on the revenue side, you would add the difference of those two, which is roughly about 428000 Okay. So basically, between those two, you're adding about 438,000 to the UFP. Now, how does the 129,000 from the grant play into that? It doesn't do anything except for if if we needed, if we actually had overexpended, then that's a comparison to the budget. So, grant monies is unbudgeted. And the accounting says that if you have grant monies received and grant monies expended, you can increase the budget by that amount of money, which then says that you've actually not expended the $128,000 against the original budget. It would not do anything to the, to the fund balance. You spent the money. It's just a comparison to budget, whether or not you're over or under. Okay, but the 129000 and the grant is in the expenditures. Yeah. Okay. The grant money coming in then is in the revenues. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that is part of the six seven seven four. Yeah. So the reality is then the number is roughly about four hundred and thirty eight thousand. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Final point is back to the point I made. I, I don't believe that um, the one end result of that that we should be going ahead um, with a hundred thousand dollar encumbrance. Um, simply because we don't have a, a legally binding obligation. And I, I think we're just, if we start doing that, particularly with large sums of money or whatever, I, I just don't think it's the proper way to do it. I don't think it's consistent with the statutes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for the recognition. Admiral Spotser, good to see you. Isn't this fun? That's what I live for. There you go. Um, thanks for the great work you do. And uh, I'm just taking it a little bit of a different tack. I'd, I'd like to talk about the revenues. Sure. And this isn't anything you're even going to really have to look at. I'm just going to kind of freely talk. And uh, when you look at the revenues from the state of New Hampshire, they're down 3%. Okay, so we're getting less money. But when you go to what we do for business in town here, our revenues 
some revenues by different lines are up 2,400 percent, 250 percent, 109 percent. Someone tell me to stop. 1,119. <laughs> I mean, I can go on and on. There's a lot of economic activity in Hampton, and it's an improving. It's a vibrant economic, small business, commercial, mercantile town, and the town is in business. Then you contrast that with the state side and what we're getting from the state. So we've got we've got items that are up a thousand percent, twenty four hundred percent. We're up hundreds, um, almost two hundred thousand dollars in the in the in the uh, delta. But the the state we're down three percent, and uh, it's the big mystery. But it's not really a mystery. Is we're just not getting our fair share. And uh, in my, my uh, past comments, and Selectman Moore rightly said, what are you going to do? So we're going to meet this week, and you know we're meeting. We're going to go over a little game plan. It's going to be really simple. Um, we're going we're to really drill down on incident reporting, um, which is going to develop the revenue in line with these lines here. And uh, we're going to get those metrics from department heads, and we're really going to go forward with this. And it's going to be your duty, our responsibility. We're going to uh, establish costs for operations, personnel. Uh, we're going to go with um, our capital items. We're going to depreciate that. We've looked at the uh, audit from last year. There's some, they're not adverse opinions, but there's some things we're not going to do that we are going to do. Um, I spoke to Mr. Colby, our CPA, on the phone last week about it. We're going to look at retirement costs that we're not making uh, um, incidents about uh, or we're not making uh, um, recognition for. We're not depreciating some of these capital items, and they have, a, they have an effect on, on, on our performance here. And if you just took the numbers from the increase in productivity, which is what it really is, because people in Hampton are paying these, these increased revenues to the town, if you just applied those same revenues to, the, to what the state has given us, you're looking at six to $700,000 in increased revenue. And when we look at the rooms and meals tax here, we can see that there's $660,000. You can get a restaurant in probably our smallest seasonal pizza shop in town, and those two ventures are paying all of that. So we're going to work with this, and I look forward to working with you and communicating openly and uh, help alleviate some of these, uh, these penny-pinching items. And they're rightfully so penny pinch. but um, when, when you actually do look at this document, uh, there's red ink on the state side, and there's serious growth and serious economic activity um, in the town of Hampton. And I, I look forward to seeing you for about five minutes on Wednesday. I'll telegraph what I'm going to yep. do, and you run with it, and thank you for your time. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Other comments? Mr. Moore? Yeah, just to follow up to what Mr. Bean just said, uh, is, it is it appropriate for any of us to be talking to the auditors without the board knowing? I'm just, I'm not clear on that, especially if it regards Well, I, 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 I sent an email, if you must know, to, oh. to the town manager and uh, Admiral Schwotzer, Mr. Schwotzer, um, <laughs> sent me the information, <laughs> and I, I, I talked to him. If that's inappropriate, then I'm condemned. Well, no, it's, I'm not trying to condemn you, Phil. I just that some of the stuff that you speak about is talking about the implementation of an accounting standard, which I would love for us to implement, but we've always said that we're not going to, so uh, the depreciation in particular. So, uh, Specific as BS. Well, right. and, and, Thank you. And, you know, to, 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 okay. and, and just to go on, it, it's, uh, um, I, I, here's my notes from Mr. Colby, and uh, uh, it's, it's not in line with GASB, and those are government accountings. Oh, I And th th those are words from his mouth, so if we don't want to follow that, um, I'm not on board with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would love to follow it, except we've got to spend more money to, to set it up properly. I'd love to go to Gatsby 34. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I would uh, like to make a motion, and my motion is that we remove the $100,000 for the sewer work under Winnicunit Road for the contract that does not exist. I'll second that. We have a first and a second discussion. Is this what you recommend, uh, or if you have? It's, it's the board's. It's the board's wish. I tried to at least uh, give them or you the vehicle to cover the work that we believe is in underneath uh, Lafayette Road. It's if it's not done this way, then it'll come out of next year's budget if the work is has proceeded. So I personally am not going to have a problem with doing it the way that you've suggested. Yep. I think, we've, I think we've done things like this in the past. It's not inconsistent. Uh, we've talked, it's not as if it hasn't been transparent. We've talked about this earlier that said that we, 
if we knew that we had some issues. In fact, I think we used the word encumber when we talked about it earlier in the year. So I, I think it's we've we've been through this before, uh, and I think we've. I think the finance director is following the in the direction that was provided earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a significant problem with that, Ben. Thank you anyway. Uh, if in fact the statute makes it pretty clear in my mind that we're supposed to at least okay this, and the second thing I have a problem with, it has the appearance that we had a purchase, so to speak, that would violate the purchasing policy. So we got two significant <coughs> problems there that I have to deal with in my own mind and I think that we can't if we start making little exceptions for little I mean this is a significant exception for hundred thousand dollars I think that's that is just not right in my mind plus we're taking a hundred thousand dollars out of this year's budget and applying it to something we're going to do in 2013 <coughs> that the voters didn't approve in the budget. So one could argue that it's not really a very clean thing to do. Okay, any other comments? I, I have one other comment. Um, <coughs> had we done the necessary work and actually had a contract, whatever, I would be all in favor of this. But I'm absolutely opposed to us <coughs> encumbering amount of money that the statute says we have to have a legally enforceable obligation and we have something listed here with a company that we're acknowledging doesn't exist. But that, that's just okay. it's phony. Any it other is. comments? All those in favor of getting rid of it? No. Yeah. no. Oh, well, wait. In what favor was of the, the motion. The, the motion was to remove yeah. the $100,000. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. All those are I, I didn't get a chance to comment, and I would like to. Oh, okay, if I'm I sorry. Mr. Chairman, it'll be very brief. I, I, I think I did hear um, the town manager say that the statute says may. Is that correct, Mr. Welch? No. We're talking about transfers. transfers. Transfers? Okay. This is All a right. completely different statute. Uh, and, and, and the other is, um, is, is, this, is this a point of law? Selectman Nichols? I would say so. Okay. And did we get input from the town attorney on this? Okay. No. Thank you very much. That's all I have. I myself am going to go with what Mr. Schwarzer has to say. So all those in favor of Mr. Uh, Nichols' motion. motion and those against? So it's 3 2. I don't think this has a very good presence in the public view. Thank you. Could I ask uh, the board's indulgence? And in the one, one other thing that I was requesting was permission to, in essence, generate through my fault that it wasn't done, generate a purchase order to the tune of $14,350 to update the code uh, through the general code LLC. And we do have uh, documentation going back to August uh, with a quote. It's a sole source. I would move that we add the 14340 350 350 for the code book update. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Uh, I don't think really, really should do this because now we're into the January by half a month and we're trying to go back and tidy up um, 2012. Um, I don't think that really comes up to any accounting standards I've ever read, especially when I took accounting and got my degree in business administration. I don't think that cuts it, so I'm definitely against that. Move the question. All those in favor, against, three to two. Thank you very much. And I will be back in a couple of weeks. I will have answers and I will get them out to you uh, prior to that time and I will continue to work on the information. We realize it's rough at, at the end of the year I'm and uh, you look a little tired, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I will not be putting this up on the web page. Uh, somebody asked about it today. This to me is an interim number and so I want to get further through the, <coughs> the process before we start publishing numbers and it will be the amount that will actually go into the town report. Thank so you. So when would you be publishing the December expenditure uh, when I come back in the next two weeks, two weeks from now? Okay, by the end of January then. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you much. Thank you.